What is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. One gross Brad, joined by my co-host Micah. Hello. And Terrence. What's up? So our first story requires two pieces of seemingly unrelated background um, that will become clear in their unity as we focus into the story. The first one is that, as you know, if you listen to this podcast or have just been paying attention to the game's news for the past you know year and a half, two years or so, uh, crunch in the game industry is at an all-time high level of scrutiny and dislike among gamers, among game makers, things of that nature. Um, trust me, if you're if you're crunching your studio, uh, you will be met with uh, scorn and anger uh, from the internet. And thing number two, background number two, is that there's a saying on Twitter, is that every day on Twitter, there's a main character, and the objective of Twitter is to never be that person. That that's 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 the goal <laughs> of Twitter works. is to never be the main character of Twitter that day. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Unfortunately for Glenn Schofield, uh, the head of Striking Distance Studios, uh, who are currently developing the Callisto Protocol, which is the kind of Dead Space-esque horror game that's supposed to come out this year, uh, in terms of the gaming industry, uh, Glenn found himself as the main character uh, just a couple of days ago, thanks to an ill-fated tweet uh, that he decided to send out one morning a couple days ago, completely unprompted. Like, Glenn, Glenn Schofield woke up that morning and he said, you know what? Typed out his tweet, took a, took a sit back, folded his arms much like I'm doing right now, nodded his head slowly, and hit send. And <laughs> he, was, he was damn proud of himself. He, was he on a media scrum when he did it? I don't know. I don't uh, think so. <laughs> Did did he did he just come? Did he just sit down and say "fuck Colt Cabana" for no <laughs> more, more more on that when we get to the Dead Pixels Post Office? Um, but no, like I'm pretty sure, like given the time that the tweet was sent, that Glenn Glenn Schofield might have been taking his morning shit when he sent this tweet out, which might explain um, how it happened. Quoting now from Glenn Schofield: We are working six to seven days a week. Nobody's forcing us. Exhaustion. Tired. COVID. But we're working. Bugs. Glitches. Performance fixes. One last pass through audio. 12 to 15 hour days. This is gaming. Hard work. Lunch. Dinner. Working. You do it because you love it. Needless to say. Yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, uh, Glenn Schofield's tweet raised just a couple of eyebrows uh, around the industry, both uh, from fans and from media alike. Yeah, here's I, the thing I, about I, here's the th oh, go ahead. I, I see what he's I see what he's trying to do, right? Like he's trying to make it seem like, oh, I'm putting my uh, my my blood, sweat, and tears into this, right? But but. Like, that's not in fashion right now. You know? like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, people it's don't not, like yo. this shit. Nah, yo. Nah, there's a whole movement of people just doing their jobs quiet uh, to, qu to quietly quit. Right? Like, <laughs> Which means you know, just doing like, your job. <laughs> Here, here's the thing about crunch. It don't work. No. It don't no, work. It How many fucking games have come out in the last 10 years that have just just complete garbage when well, not not the game itself but like all the bugs all like shit just doesn't work yeah, it's because um, yeah. it's because you it's because you slam yourself up to this deadline and work as hard as you can but eventually you do hit the deadline yeah, and you inevitably it, and you yeah. have to relieve you have to release it and the shit don't work and then you gotta fucking work even harder to get the bug fixes to, to get a patch out so the game does work and it's and it's all I for work. nothing it's all for nothing <laughs> I again, I I can't imagine how tone deaf Glenn Schofield has to be to, to have tweeted this out and be like, "This is a great idea." Like I get, like I'm I'm so proud to put this tweet out. And again, like this is one of the most unforced errors that I can recall in recent memory because nothing but positive coverage around this game. Like Jeff Keighley's featuring him at whatever Jeff Keighley events going on, and he can get up on stage and talk about it for. 
10 minutes and you know the people that like Dead Space are really looking forward to this game and it looks pretty good from all the previews that have come out like there has been nothing but positive energy positive coverage positive feelings around this game and he has pretty much like put the put the ruin on that just with one really stupid tweet he did tweet he did delete it of course um and and tweet out an apology later where he said quote Anyone who knows me knows how passionate I am about the people I work with. Earlier, I tweeted about how proud I was of the effort and the hours the team was putting in. That was wrong. We value passion and creativity, not long hours. I'm sorry to the team for coming across like this. <laughs> it wasn't wrong. Like, it wasn't wrong to, to, to say how my team is passionate about this project. Like, the way you went about it was wrong. The oh, yeah. words you use were incorrect. Like, yeah, we're, we're slaving 12 to 15. No one likes to work 15 hour days, no. especially if they're not getting paid Why? as much as you, my nigga. Like, what are you doing? Well, and that's, and that's the point. That's So, like, Jason Stryer was the first person out the gates, like, commenting on this, and rightfully so. And that was what he rightfully pointed out. Like, this is the head of the studio. Right. Coming out here and being like, oh, like 12 to 15 hour days, seven days a week, baby. Like, fuck your meals. Like, you're working through it all. Like, that's like if, if the head of the studio is coming out and saying that, whether or not like the requirement exists at the studio that this is what's expected, when the head of the studio, the guy that decides people's salaries, the guy that decides like who gets hired and who stays on the project is tweeting this, you are inherently putting pressure on everyone else in the studio to. To come along for that ride, essentially. I'm too sure for that ride, nigga. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to do my work, go home, and have a nice meal with my family, and yeah. then come back and work my, my regular eight. And the game will come out when it does. I didn't even know when the fuck the game was supposed to be. I didn't even know it, it was his game. Yeah. Honestly, that's why it looks so fucking much like Dead Space. I didn't realize that. It's, um, like... <laughs> You guys ever do a job that like you you've done you've we've all done jobs that we don't like, mm -hmm. but like have you ever put in those hours? Like I've put in Drivers. those hours, late, yeah, like like ten, twelve, thirteen hour days. Sure, mm -hmm. like I've done that like five days a week when I worked at a patent and trademark office, and you kill yourself. Yeah, yo, like I really wanted to, <laughs> like, I really wanted to blow that fucking building up, man. Like I really did. Like <laughs> like you could tell and you can tell when uh, I was at the patent and trademark office if you go far enough back and listen to the podcast because I'm just out of it. And I'm just like annoyed and I just can't I can't stand it. And and I didn't know what it was. Is it was that. And there's that's not that's no way to live. That's no yeah. way to live. Well, and so I've, I've been in leadership positions for a long time in my, like, day job, essentially. And I've always tried to make it a point to, you know, work my scheduled hours most of the time to not, you know, put in long hours at the office, that kind of stuff. Because I want my employees to know that, like, like your time at work is your time at work and your time, your free time is valuable, too. Like, you can't sit there and, you know sit there and work, you know, nine, 10 hour days every single day. Like I, I used to at GameStop, I used to chastise because basically what used to happen back in the day is ma store managers were required back when they were on salary, store managers were required to work 44 hours a week, but you would routinely have store managers that would work like 50, 55 hours a week. And I would like, I would like chide those people. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, look, I, I got to do this to get the work done. I was like, then manage better. Like, if you can't, if you can't get out the door in 44 hours, then you're not managing well enough. And that's yeah. the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Like, like long hours from your team is a direct, uh, direct result like of poor team. management. Yeah. And I and and this is the thing that people don't understand for some strange reason. Like working those long hours, you're not working at 100 no. percent for 12 hours. There's going to be downtime. Like there's, there's, there's going to be like eight, 15 minute breaks, right? Like there's going to be people <laughs> who are just kind of lollygagging and just like not doing anything because they're burnt out because they don't want to be there. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, their focus will be that, like working that, working that many hours I I in a row is not, it's, it's, it's more inefficient. 
mm-hmm. than just working your scheduled time and working to your working to your the max of your capability within that scheduled time. Man, nah, man, yeah, like, fuck just... off, yo. Uh, <laughs> so... And and he's and he's like like one he's it's it's like a double like like. Like he's like, oh, we're working so hard. We're working so hard. We're passionate. We're passionate, right? But the thing that the thing that annoys me is when he says um, uh, something to the effect of, "No one's forcing us to do this." Right. Well, and I bet you, I bet you, he thought like that was the silver bullet that would get him right. off the hook, right? Nah, he's like, "Oh, no one's nah. making us do this." Yeah, but but nah. you, the studio head is yeah, the deadline is yeah. Like, <laughs> the game comes out December second. So, and, yeah, we have to work a little bit harder. And again, I, I I feel bad for anyone at this studio now because this this tweet is going to hang over this game, and the game the final product when it does come out, whether it does come out in December or whether they delay the game, because obviously if they're working twelve to fifteen hour days, they probably need to. But this tweet is going to hang over this game, and people are like, the 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 if there's any negative points about the game when it comes out, like the stuff that people don't like about it that potentially could have been fixed with more time or things like that. Like people are going to attribute this culture to the game, whether it's true or not, because he put this out there and don't be shocked if like, <laughs> like, like, you know, one of the other things Jason Schreier was doing is like, Hey, if anyone from the studio wants to, wants to reach out to me, like here, <laughs> like my, oh, like my I'll DMs bet. are open. <laughs> so that, now, now I'm waiting for the six months from now, Bloomberg, you know, expose, like what's it really like in Glenn's Glenn Schofield studios? Like people and are crushing like crazy. No, because this is their first game. Right. From this studio. <laughs> like you, good job, nigga. White. Okay. Yeah, white men. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all dumb. Your people are like, come on, like you got all of the power, and then you make you make other people feel bad for not being where you are. So you're like, yeah, you got to work a few hours to get this done. You're not being forced to, but like to become me, you got to put that work in. I'm like, I don't want to be you though. Yeah, I love what I do, but I also love to not do what I do. <laughs> well, that, I mean, and that's and that's the balance. It's fucking silly. Like that's that's the thing is that like. No, no human being exists on this earth to fucking work and work and work all day. Like, like, like you don't live to work; you work to live. Like, that's that's the difference. You know what I mean? So, like, it's <laughs> yeah, well, that's, the, that's the culture. That we, uh, how old is uh, Glenn? How old is Glenn Schofield? I had to early fifties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then that makes a lot of fucking sense then, because like uh, people of a certain age, they feel like. The, the, it's the whole well I had to do it so you gotta do it mm-hmm. where it should be like no I had to do it so you don't have to do it right like like the, 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 the our, our parents who, who fought through civil rights aren't lambasting us because we don't because we're not getting hit with fire hoses and shit <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's a real it's a real uh real real ex boomer mentality coming from uh from Glenn Schofield. <laughs> they don't even have his age. I'm trying to find out how old he is. I can't tell. <laughs> old old enough to fucking know better. How about that? Yeah, man. How like, about it's that? just it's just I don't know. It's just weird, man. Like like don't you have kids, bro? Like like <laughs> don't you want things to be easier for the next All right. All right. No. All right. Um guess what? You can go to densepixels.com slash fans. And when you do that, you're going to invite us to our Discord. Discord is a wonderful little community where we talk about video games and wrestling and soccer and Formula One and just general gaming news and and, and all this good stuff. Um, go to densepixels.com slash fans. Uh, join the Discord. Uh, when you come on, it'll say, you know, such and such has hopped into Discord click here to say hi and then we'll all click and we'll all give some sort of weird like bird or something waving at you uh to welcome you in because that's how discord is it's silly um go to youtube.com slash dense pixels and subscribe uh, click that like button hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell uh so you can see the rim job that i have with my light 
If you're, if you're, as, as, if, if, if you're watching on YouTube, as you see, Mike is making me and Terrence look really bad with his, with his uh, visual setup that he has going on right now. He looks like a pro, and me and Terrence look like look scrubs that, that don't know what they're doing. In a den. <laughs> um, while you're subscribing, subscribe to all of the TMP Studios podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, including the Nerdpocalypse, Black on Black Cinema, Coming Distractions. Uh, and the weekly preview episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. Uh, and because that's not enough, go to densepixels.com slash premium for $5 a month or $50 for a full year. You get access to all the other shows that we had behind the paywall, including the airing of grievances, No Time to Bleed, The Men with the Golden Tongues, Upstage Conversations, and the full episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. Look, the $5 a month or $50 a year is worth it for the Look Forward Political Podcast alone. Uh, because they do a very, very, Brad and Jay do a very good job of getting that out every week. And um, and politics has never been more fun listening to those two. <laughs> for, all, um, for all the wrong reasons, usually. Usually, usually. But, uh, you know, go go give give us your five bucks and uh, go listen to the thugs of news. Um <laughs> <laughs> right, it's a double-edged sword because the worse the news is, the funnier the show is. It's that's true. It's but it, but it's you know po- politics is like one of those things where it's, it's like it's like an offensive lineman. Like when things are going really well, you don't tend to notice it, but when things are when when, when things are really bad, like <laughs> it sticks out like a sore thumb. That's what politics is. Well, there you go. Uh, we had two pretty high-profile examples this week of anti-trans bigotry. Uh, being punished in the games industry, uh, which you love to see, even if it took a little too long, uh, maybe, to get there. Uh, The first example comes uh, from Steam, where there's this game that came out uh, a while back called Domina. And by all accounts, Domina was a fun game. Pretty good game. It was made by an independent developer. Um, But this dude was an alt-right crazy person um the guy that makes this game and people started to pick up on that when he would release uh as part of his patch notes a lot of alt-right screeds and and far right wing uh you know political musings in the patch notes for his game because that's a thing that you do and a lot of folks were like, hey, like, I really like your game, but ha- can your patch notes just be your patch notes? Like, if you're going to be a fucking asshole, like, can you not do it, like, in the middle of these fucking patch notes? This isn't, this is kind of stupid. Why are you doing this? Um, and he just kept kind of pushing and pushing. There was a, uh, there was a video uh, that came out a couple weeks ago from Stephanie Sterling where she exposed him um, as, like, this kind of crazy person, and it sent this dude on... Like kind of a <laughs> kind of oh, like off the deep end. Guy. Yeah, this yeah, guy. I saw, I saw their video. Their, their video was really funny. Yeah, uh, both both okay. both the video that they put out originally, and then the response, like when this guy was spiraling, <laughs> trying to get them to respond on Twitter, and got himself banned from Twitter because <laughs> Stephanie Sterling wouldn't respond to him. Like like, <laughs> like, 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 like he was, he was, he was like filing Twitter support claims being like, you have to make this person talk to me. You have to make this person talk to me. And, and then they're like, you're posting some <laughs> fucked up shit. How the fuck does that work? I, it, 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 white entitlement, Terrence. That's how that works. How, 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 how dare, how dare you not meet me on the battleground of ideas? So oh, shit. the, but the last straw appeared to be, um, when this person, was picking on a Twitch streamer named Keffels, who is a trans woman um, who's been dealing with a lot of shit lately, and we'll talk about her in the next story as well. Um, But he put up a post, did the Domina uh, developer, where he announced that the game had a new name called Dominus. And the the post begins, and I'm going to quote here, We're out of ideas, mentally unstable, totally degenerate, and desperate for clout. Let's pretend we're a completely different game to regain relevance. End quote. Um, Basically, the post goes on to be an anti-trans screed against Keffels and other trans people. I'm sure he was also pissed off at Stephanie Sterling and that whole, um, you know, that whole brouhaha that happened. And then 
basically uh, Steam banned him from his own games forums. <laughs> because, because he was going off like a fucking crazy right-wing lunatic. So, according to Steam, uh, they said, quote... A recent announcement posted to the Dominus Community Hub included insults targeting another person. We also noticed that you're clearing a number of reported posts in your hub containing various rule violations. We made it clear in our last communication that future violations of our rules and guidelines like this would jeopardize our future relationship. With that in mind, we are ending our business relationship with Dolphin Barn Incorporated, which is the name of his development company, and removing all associated products from sale. Uh, the reason that we know this is because... Uh, this person, this developer, uh, whose name is Nicholas John Leonard Groyson, that's too many names, uh, decided to go on Twitter and share the fact that Steam took his game down, even though it was uh, quite embarrassing for him that that was that is a That is a serial killer level of names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nicholas John Leonard Groyson. Okay. Mm. Yeah, um, we'll Look, this person uh, obviously there is a there is a young girl inside this person desperately trying to come out, and he is having he is he he cannot cope with it. That's the only thing I can think of um, because he's like he's like I mean why like why else would you care? Why else would that's, you care? That's my thing. Like who? What is it hurting you? How do these people hurt you in any way, physically or mentally? Right. I've been deceived because they. Because they because they exist, Terrence, that's literally all that's, it takes for well, these fragile, yeah, I, I know, right? fragile white men to, to well, be. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm black, so yeah, I understand <laughs> that. <laughs> you know, but, like, it's just so bizarre. Like, to the point where you get banned from your own forum. And your game and gets your, taken down. And you, it's a good thing he's the only person that had anything to do with the game. Because I would be tight if I, was, if I was a fucking developer for him. I want to fight this nigga. <laughs> like, you're taking money out of my pocket because you're a fucking bigot. I mean, I would hope that I would hope that if you uh, if you were if he had a team well, yeah. like based on the other posts that he had put up over the years. Oh, he's crazy. Yeah, that he, that they like, would I've have cut his other shit. I'm like, I don't know how he even lasted that long. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess putting like anti mask stuff is not uh, not a bridge too far for Steam and your yeah. patch notes. Like that's the thing that kills me. Like you're putting this shit in your in your fucking patch notes. Like what are you doing? Like like that kind of, that kind of gives away the game. Right then and there, like it's one thing to post this shit in forums and stuff like that, but like if you're gonna, if you're gonna literally force people to read it that are trying to, you know, see updates for the game by putting in your fucking patch notes, like that's not what those are there for. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, like you obviously are not religious. That's how you push an agenda. That's how you. That's how you get the message out there. You have to. Maybe he thought he was doing it subliminally. Maybe right. Like, like, I mean, I mean, never to, see this coming. I mean, to be, I mean, to be fair, the uh, the Ten Commandments were the original 1.0 patch notes of of the world. So, <laughs> uh, so maybe, 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 maybe they're based in fact a little bit. Maybe that's why it's okay that we have like 800 different editions of the Bible that exist because they're all they're all just iterations and just uh, you know, they're they're patching it for errata and things of that nature. Uh, they're patching it so that you can actually read it, right? Like reading the Bible, like you ever you ever sit down and actually try to read the Bible? Like I it is not. It. I was like, this is stupid. And stuff. It's not. You can't. Nope. You can't do it. it. It's it's very weird. First of all, they tell you don't read it cover to cover, which is fucking wild to me. They're like, no, you got to start here and then go here and then go here and then go here, like a fucking choose your own adventure. And then, like. You got to pick the right translation. And the only translation I can think of is like the New Living translation where they use like actual words and not like broken Shakespeare. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know how we got on that, but like stop being a bigot. You, yeah. You're not deceived. Someone being trans isn't deceiving you. Like get the fuck out of here. I know someone who claims to be trans and I and you know what I do? I immediately call them by whatever pronoun they want to be called that's it it's not a big deal yeah it's really yeah, not it does like it's a big deal but it's not right it's a big deal for them it's big it's not, not a big deal yeah, it's not a big deal to you like it's a big deal to right. them it shouldn't be a big deal to you um right along those lines so we we mentioned um the trans woman uh, what was her name keffels uh, is what she goes by on twitch and she had been the the recipient of a ton of harassment um, from this uh, from this forum called Kiwi Farms, and this forum was responsible for getting her house uh, swatted 
by police in Canada and, and those police pointing like a gun in her face. Um, she fled her home because of this harassment and she was uh, holed up in a hotel and was swatted again uh, in the hotel um, because they figured out where she was. And she had been trying in vain uh, to get Cloudflare, who was hosting the site, uh, to drop them. And Cloudflare, Cloudflare had been resisting uh, to that point. Uh, for, you know, the same bullshit reasons that any, you know, website like that says, well, you know, we can't, we, we can't be the police of, well, the, of the language and the things that our, that our clients do. Like, that's, that's against free speech. Like, you're not the government cloud flare. Like, fucking settle down. Like, if someone's, you know, literally hara targeting harassment in somebody, you don't have to host them. You, you just don't have to do it. Um, and so eventually they did. Eventually, Cloudflare said, you know what, we, we don't want to host this guy anymore in this website. Uh, we're going to drop it. And there's another uh, hosting uh, service called H HCAPTCHA uh, that dropped their support as well. And so Kiwi Farm said, you know where I'm going to go? Uh, I'm going to go to the bastion of the, uh, the right-wing uh, universe. I'm going to go to Russia. And, <laughs> and it went to a Russian company called uh, DDoS Guard. Uh, which is a, a website hosting uh, service that is based in Russia. And it took that service only 24 hours uh, to delist his website. And now... Uh, that was in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> like, God damn. God damn. Right. <laughs> you gotta be real fucked like, up. Like, 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 pick, like picking on the... Picking on the uh, the LGBTQ community in Russia is like a like that's a, a benefit, not a now. yeah. Like that, that's a that that that'll, that'll get, get you extra work. That'll get you a position at at, at like the head of state. Like <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the owner of the site, Joshua Moon, uh, is very upset. Uh, and and I got to tell you, his the fir his first sentence, it it just it just like it just hits me right here. It makes me smile. It makes me laugh. Quote. This meme about Russia being a free country is a joke. <laughs> like you think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. First of all, who's what? memeing that Russia is a free country? <laughs> all, all right people, the, pe the people that this asshole hangs out with think, thinks that like Russia is the bastion of freedom. I'm in my brain short circuit real quick. Yeah. I don't understand that at all. What the fuck is this nigga? Okay. So he goes on to say, and and I want you to I want you to note a couple of the examples that he brings up. Just just so you can see like you know where this dude's head is at. He says, I do not see a situation where Kiwi Farms is simply allowed to operate. It will either become a fractured shell of itself like 8chan or jump between host and domain names like the Daily Stormer. Good company. <laughs> like, like if, if, if that's if that's the if that's the example of persecution that you're bringing forward to defend yourself, um, you know, I feel like you fucked up. Oh my gosh, man! Yo, what the fuck? Serious. Hell. And and this and this dude's this dude's oh, site got so nuked. Uh, that it's not even on the Wayback Machine. Like, like if you go, like, like, like the Wayback folks removed it from the archive. So, like, it, like it doesn't even exist in the Internet Archive. It's just gone. Just, it could just completely nuked from existence. Good. <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah, you literally put someone's life in danger. Yeah. Several times. Yeah. So, like, yeah, uh, you should go to jail. Honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. To be perfectly honest, you deserve prison time for this shit. Uh, Ke Keffels came out uh, after this happened and spiked the football as she is, you know, perfectly in her rights to do because she worked very hard to to make this happen. Um, and it sucks that she had to go through that uh, that amount of harassment to get to this point. So, yeah, man. Jesus Christ. Fucking terrible. Like, man. You know, just leave people alone. You yeah. Know? Like what? Like, like, it's not that hard, man. Just leave. People so what alone. would happen if they actually if the, if the SWAT actually worked? I mean, they swatted their, their her uh, her house, mm -hmm. and then they, they're fucking. I mean, the SWAT did them. work. The police came. So what I mean, like, what if they came and like they actually shot a gun? And they, like, what if she, what if she was black and they shot her? What well, they they th you this did happen, right? Like this happened in no, Kansas, they, right? Well, yeah, there's someone did get shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, that dude went to jail, right? He did. Yep. But like, how do you feel about that? Like, as the as the forum, like we killed one of them. Is that what? You, is that what? Yes, you, probably. That's how they would feel. Thing. Yeah. 
They did nothing to you. Like people are just cruel. I told you they they exist, Terrence. That's that's the only crime that that trans people commit. Apparently, like, in the I don't eyes understand of these how fucking cruel, idiots. How you can be that cruel that someone is just well, I understand it, but like it's just I, I don't understand that mentality. It's fucking bizarre. It's hard to understand it in this day and age, right? Yeah. Like I get it, like because we've like mankind has had a history of doing that shit. But like yeah. I, I hate I hate to be this guy, but like yo, it's twenty twenty two, yo. Like why, like why are we <laughs> yeah. why are we still hating why are people we still because doing they do? shit. <laughs> like come on, man. Jesus. Well, that's probably one of the reasons. But <laughs> 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 but but that's neither here nor there, I guess. <laughs> like just I, I really am not looking forward to the next episode of Black on Black Cinema, guys. I'm really not looking forward to hearing three atheists and me talk about honk for Jesus save your soul. Oh, you oh, guys I'm reviewing just, that next? <laughs> yeah, I've wa- I've already it. watched it. Yeah, it's very I, good. I've watched it. It is very, very good. good. I, I am I not can't looking wait. forward. I am not. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to try and answer for oh, for, uh, for religious people. Why do why do I why do I feel like that that episode is going to be like the black version of like the 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 trial and evolution episode from Always Sunny? Like it's just me Mike up here like in the back. <laughs> Science, Yo, science is episode. wrong sometimes. I love that episode, man. I love it. I- <laughs> Uh, he had him, man. He turned him. <laughs> well, he didn't turn him. He put him on the fence. Like, like, like they're yeah. all the fence. Yeah, by the there end you of the go. Now, that, look, that's all I can hope for. That's all I can hope. <laughs> Keep hoping. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Speaking of uh, Jesus and Bibles, uh, go to densepixels dot com slash amazon. Uh, your God uh, for all of shopping. When you go to densepixels dot com slash amazon. Uh, and do all your Amazon purchases there. You don't pay any extra, and you get, uh, and we get uh, a very small attaboy from Jeff Bezos. Now, I am at densepixels.com slash Amazon right now, and I am going to type in Bible. And let's see what we get. <clears throat> Top result, uh, prove it. Catholic teen Bible reverse nab. I don't know what that is. Um, it is uh, $13 paperback. Um, and and this one, I guess, appears to be uh, a book for teens who are trying to question whether or not God is real. And um, no, nah, this is whack. This is whack. <laughs> this, is, this is a weird one. I have a lot of Bible covers. Um, yeah, this this is not a this is not a good. Okay, go to densepixels.com slash Amazon, but don't type in Bible. They don't have good <laughs> Bibles. Type uh, type something don't else. They have good Bibles. No, nah, they don't have good Bibles. They they got whack Bibles. They got whack Bibles. Uh, um, Micah, I feel like I'm going to need you to weigh in the most on this story because I'm very interested to get your perspective. So, three four three Industries, developers of the Halo series, most recently Halo Infinite, uh, put out an update saying that the game's cooperative campaign has been delayed again. Um, Originally, uh, they were planning on having this come out in the spring, summer. Uh, They now said that November 8th is when they are targeting to have campaign co-op released um, in the interim. Uh, Beyond that, they also announced that the second, sorry, third season of Halo Infinite's uh, online mode is not going to be starting until March of next year, which means that season two, uh, in this quote unquote live service uh, esque delivery model, uh, will have lasted for ten months by the time the third season makes its way out. Uh, and most disappointingly, at all, um, split screen co op has been canceled outright. Uh, which is very disappointing, especially considering in the past 343 has said that they consider split-screen co-op to be a non-negotiable feature um, to the Halo uh, Halo games that should be in every single version. Um, they did put out a roadmap of what we can expect to come. Uh, we're also going to see the Forge beta uh, in the November to March period, as well as a couple new maps and, and things of that nature as well. Um 
my thought here <laughs> is that 343 now, and, and again, I'm I'm not like a Halo fan. Uh, Infinite's the only one that I've played to any length, and even that wasn't very much. Um, but 343 has had three bites at the apple here. Halo 4 was considered by mostly to be fine, but not great. Uh, Halo 5 uh, that was definitely not met with very much uh, positive reception. Uh, the Master Chief Collection was a bug-riddled mess for a very long time uh, when it first came out. That took literally years uh, to smooth over. And now we have Halo Infinite, which launched uh, to great acclaim. It was Micah's second uh, ranked game of 2021 last year. Uh, but has not had the support, or at least the support for uh, most Halo games has not been present uh, for this one, taking much longer than people anticipated to roll out key features and promise features uh, to this game mode. And, and play is stagnated. Um, I, I saw on Steam uh, that currently Halo Infinite sees about uh, 5,000 concurrent users on a daily basis. Not that Steam is the be-all, end-all of, of, you know, measure for a Halo game, because Xbox has a big say as well, but it's it's a barometer. Um, by comparison, uh, Apex Legends has about 450,000 concurrent users on a daily basis. <laughs> that game is four years old. It is. <laughs> yeah. So, Micah, um, my thoughts are, and I, I'm curious to get your thoughts and Terrence as well, I don't necessarily think that 343 needs to go away. I certainly don't want those people to lose their jobs. But they shouldn't have Halo anymore, right? Um, I don't I don't think so. I um I really enjoyed my time with Halo when I when I played it, but um season 1 lasted 6 months. It was supposed to last 3 months, <laughs> which is which is supposed, you know, 3 months feels about right for that game, especially mm -hmm. Because, you know, the way the battle pass system works, like you can buy the battle pass and once you buy it, you own it forever and you can switch battle passes. You just have to, you know, activate it. Six months was six months is way too long for uh, a season of Halo, uh, given that, you know, there are only a handful of maps that you can use. And they tried to keep it fresh every couple of months with like different game modes, but. I I I I, ex I exhausted that first battle pass, and um, that that was that was it for me. Mm -hmm. um, I tried season two, and I just I couldn't get into it. Um, no campaign co op. I mean, that's ridiculous because that campaign is that campaign is boring. That can that campaign is super boring. The only way I could see enjoying that campaign is with another person. Um, no split screen. I mean, it, it, that sucks, but I don't have anybody else in the house to play this game with. Um, but how, how you know, do people do co-op anymore? Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, but at the same time, like it would be nice to have, but I'm not, I'm not worried about it. No, no campaign co-op online. That's ridiculous. That, that is, that is oh, ridiculous. it's not even online. Not yet. No, not, not, not <laughs> no. until, God, not damn. until November, December. <laughs> and again, by, by that point, the game will have been a year old. So, right. Uh, sure. Probably came out this year instead of, uh, yeah. Last year. <clears throat> so but, to you answer know. your question, to answer your question, I, I, I feel like they've had, uh, I feel like they've had, uh, enough swings at this thing. Um, I guess it's I, the third strike. Yeah, yeah. This is the third strike, right. and I think it's time to give Halo to someone else. Yeah. Um, the problem is I don't think they will for a very long time. Um, if <laughs> unless unless they keep unless they keep three four three on like Halo's multiplayer. But like, why would you bring out another Halo and have this one right? Because if you brought out another Halo, that would have to have multiplayer. So Halo Infinite's got to die, mm -hmm. and I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna pull the plug on Halo Infinite anytime soon. Um, they're gonna fucking Avengers is still going. So if is that it, fucking have they released is, any new characters? Uh the define new because a if you if a you, different character, <laughs> like, like like yeah, but like they, Black they, Panther kind of played. Like Captain America, right? and they and they were like I think the most recent person they released was Lady Thor, who is just right. reskinned Thor. Just, 
four, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> the next and, and the next one they're teasing is the Winter Soldier. I wonder who he's gonna play. Like probably play just like the other person who uses guns for primary weapons. It'll um, just be one gun instead of two. Right. right. It'll just be one gun <laughs> instead of two. So, but at, yeah. but at the same time, Avengers is not like a tentpole franchise for Square. So like, whatever. Right. Right, yeah. Avengers is not <laughs> Avengers. Avengers is not like the one of the games that got people into gaming, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like fucking like, Halo is, a, is an institution, right? In video, games, right? It's an institution and a bad TV series, but it's still <laughs> an institution. <laughs> and you would think that you would think that you know this is the crown jewel, man. Like you would think that uh, you would think that a uh, they would they would treat Halo like you know, like the the coveted property that it is. But. I I I want you to, I want you both to imagine going getting a time machine and going back in time fourteen years and telling your two thousand eight self that in twenty twenty two both Halo and Gears of War would be almost <laughs> irrelevant as gaming franchises for Microsoft. I wouldn't yeah, believe it. Gears of War. Uh, God, <laughs> I, for, yo, I fucking forgot about Gears of War. I'm dead ass serious. I'm not even joking. Holy shit! But that's like sad, each, bro. like each of those series had three games in them, and then yeah. and then it just kind of they just kind of fell off the rails, man. I, it I, almost I, seems I like Halo Infinite should have came out December of this year instead of last year. Well, that's and what keep, it seems like to me. And I keep mean, in mind, know, December, December of last year was after a six month delay. Right. I I, I realize Xbox. Series X isn't necessarily like swimming in in new properties, so they mm-hmm. kind of had to put it out there. But again, crunch don't work. <laughs> like, <laughs> it don't work, and they could say they didn't crunch, but like I feel like every fucking company does. I just at, at a certain point, I feel like they all do. Whether it's just kind of like levels to it, and y'all still come out with just broken garbage. Like the AAA gaming space is terrible right now. So like like I don't have a system, but I don't necessarily. I do miss it. Like I like I would like to play something, mm-hmm. but it wouldn't be like the tentpole games that are coming out. Right. Like it would be fucking nothing but like um, indie games because those are far more enjoyable. They work when you actually download them. Yeah, they yeah. patch them, but they like add stuff, not fix shit that's broken. Yeah, and they're more inventive. Than the shit that comes out now, like I've seen, like I've seen footage of um, Saints Row. It looks fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks awful. It's, I've it, seen, I've seen footage of Madden Twenty Three. That <laughs> game's been the same for fucking ten years. <laughs> Broken. It's, like, it's very telling. Fuck? It's very telling to me that my top two triple A games of this year both came out, you know, six and five months ago, respectively. And there's uh, Elden Ring and GT7. Like that's yeah, I, I want to play Elden Ring. I yeah. still want to play that. Um, yeah, it's it's sad. I mean, game of the it's year. Really is, like up, I, I I really I really want to see what gets nominated for game of the year this year <laughs> for the game awards. It's like, gonna be a lot of indie stuff. Five times. There, there, yeah, there's gonna be some indie games it, that get nominated. It, you know what? It might. Yeah, it probably will. It probably what? will. A bunch of indie stuff. A bunch of indie stuff for game of the year. It probably will. But like, I guarantee you, it it, it should be like two indie games and like Elden Ring on two different consoles. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck, yo? <laughs> that's the damn stream. Like that's it's it's kind of fucked up. Like, why are we at this point in video in gaming right now where like nothing works? Like, it, we've been playing games for thirty years, right? And yeah, like when we were younger, like we just got what we got, bugs and all. But like, you figured, hey, we we got ourselves working like a well-oiled machine as far as like developers go. We have the tools to make these things like pretty not not quickly, but like we have the tools. We have the people. People love video games. We want to get these games out and we want them to like them. We don't want them to co- come out and they're like, yo, what the fuck? I paid $70 for this. Why is it not working the way it's supposed to? Just basic shit. Mm-hmm. 
why do I have to wait three months for a patch to get a fucking working game? Or why do I have to wait for the game of the year edition where all the bugs are fixed and it's cheaper? You just fucked yourself over by that. Or you just got all the money that you needed to make your ne- your next broken game. I don't... I think I think a lot of it also right. comes down to the fact that like a lot of the a lot of the people that would normally be working in the AAA space that might lend that innovation that might lend that competence, um, for lack of a better term, are working in the indie space because there's yeah. a lot less red tape. Um, you don't have to worry about you know dealing with a publisher who's like focus testing a game and trying to like build a game that appeals to as many people as possible. More you don't have to worry. Yeah, you don't have to worry about project deadlines or anything like that. Like funding becomes a little bit trickier, but you know that then that part of the industry is a little bit tougher. But at the same time, you have a lot more independence, and so those people, whereas they normally would have been gravitating towards these big AAA studios in the past, these big you know these big name developers, now are just starting their own studio with ten or twenty people and making the games they want to make. And yeah. you know, it, it's a lot. It's a lot less stressful for them. Um, it's a lot more fun because they get they get to really stretch their creativity as much as possible, and they're putting out good stuff. If if the indie, I, I think if the indie scene wasn't doing as well as it is, that the AAA scene would be in a better place. And I'm not saying that that's the indie scene's fault, because more power to them. I think the AAA games need to take some cues from the independent scene. Yeah, and, they need to steal ideas. Yeah, like, do what every <laughs> company does, and just steal, just oh, yeah. Amazon Basics the shit. Like just Amazon Basics Hades, yo. Like it's not that hard, right? Like, uh, I don't know, man. It's bizarre. Like, would you consider Hello Game? Hello Games is an indie game, as an indie company, right? Yes. There's like fifty yeah. of those motherfuckers. Like, yeah, uh, what was it No Man's Sky came out just a mess. <laughs> it mm-hmm. did, but look at it now. And that's the only game they've been working on for like. Well, they, I think they came out with another game, maybe last year. They did. It was it was the small. Yeah, I think it was, it was a like smaller game. Yeah, it was a game. smaller game. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, No Man's Sky is amazing now. Because they've worked on it for like the last six years. Well, and again, case, case in point, they were forced to bring that game out before they yeah. probably wanted to because there was pressure from a deal that they signed with, with Sony? a big studio. Sony, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So maybe that's where everybody needs to go. Like, yeah, big game studios to be are just like it's, it's all about. It. Of course, it's about money, but like, goddamn, you know, yeah, you're not making yourself look good. It's just yeah, they, they sucked all the art out of it, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> It's a shame. Yeah. It's, it's 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 like superhero fatigue, right? Like people are getting sick and tired of all these superhero movies. Like they all feel like people think they feel hollow and 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 shit like that, and they all feel the same. Like yeah. the the and look, I you know I'm I'm the first one that comes up here and is like you know I I like the McDonald's video games, right? Like they're I like the big stupid stuff, right? But at the same time, like. Nah, yo, there's a there's a there's a place. There's a time and a place. Like mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to buy uh Cult of the Lamb right after we go right after we get off the air. Just because I wanna I wanna try something new, right? <laughs> like I was so desperate to play a triple A game, I bought fucking Saints Row. <laughs> like how much was fuck? That? Sixty don't fucking worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. And that's the other thing. Like I'm, the I'm, indie I'm, games I'm, are like a third the cost. Yeah. Right. And they're so good. Like it's insane, you know. And, and, and again, like half for Cult of the Lamb, you know? There and there are very few out. Yeah. So. There there are very few games that I trust there are very few AAA game studios at this point and developers that I trust unequivocally. Like I can probably count it on one hand at this point. Like I can I can I can trust From, I can trust trust Insomniac. Um Maybe pol- like polyphony to an extent. Like I know that they're going to put out a good game. It might be a little feature barren, but That's like I know, I know that's going to be seventeen solid. years, but it'll happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. And like I'm running, I'm, and I'm running, and, and Nintendo. <laughs> like like I trust anything coming out of Nintendo, basically. That's fucking ridiculous. That's where we're at. That's really fucked up. Like it's it's mm, I don't know, man. It's where we're at. But hey, Splatoon three is coming out this week, so we got that look like, that to look forward to at least. So that'll be fun. Uh, speaking of fun, the post office uh, seems to be a trip uh, that's going to be going all over the place this week. So let's start with Johnny, who says, with the, rumor, with the rumors of what Nintendo has planned for the upcoming Nintendo Direct this month, are GameCube fans going to be eating in September? Lord, I don't know. 
Like what is like like what do you define that as? Like what is getting would getting Wind Waker and the GameCube version of Twilight Princess be enough for GameCube fans to be dying out, or do they need more? When's Eternal? Why 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 isn't there an, another Eternal Darkness game? Where's where? Uh, pro- probably because the studio that made that game then, then <laughs> right, made too human. Night? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. damn! They went oh. the way of the fucking dodo. That's what happened with that. Yeah. So yeah, well, I actually liked fucking um. What was that? Two. What's called? Two. What was two, the name two, two human. I actually like that game. It's terrible, but I actually enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I uh, so we'll, I mean, we'll see. I like I said, if if we get the Zelda uh, HD remakes from the Wii U on the Switch, then I'll be I'll be perfectly pleased with that. Um, Metroid Prime. We'll see. I feel like it has to, though. Uh, Cam says, on a scale of allegedly DDP used to let Eric Bischoff bang his wife to Dave Bautista has a massive hog, how real do you guys think the punk versus the elite uh, backstage brawl was? I mean, look. Uh, I just saw news of it today. It seems like they were, it seems real enough. Look, let's just, let's just get this out of the open right now, right? Like, wrestlers are always working. So there's a 50% chance that this is all bullshit, right? <laughs> but but let's also point out the fact that, like, that's the fun part, like getting worked. So if it's real, if it's not, I don't give a shit. It's, it's, it's fucking, this is, the best part about wrestling is not the wrestling. And unfortunately, that's really true for AEW. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, like the best part of that weekend for them was the was the media scrum after the big pay per view, where like one of your one of your marquee talents comes back, right? And nobody's talking about MJF coming back. They're all talking about CM Punk screaming "fuck Colt Cabana." Hey, uh, Punk, I wanted to talk to you about MJF. Fuck Colt Cabana. And I thought they were homeboys. No, they, they haven't been for a little while, apparently. They haven't so. been friends in a very long time, uh, uh, apparently. So look, if it's if it's real, don't tell me. I want to. Bu- it's still real to me. Damn it. If it's fake, don't tell me. Uh, if it's real, because that's the only reason why I would I would I'm giving a damn about AEW at this point because I'm kind of when I first saw a Young Bucks match, I was like, oh wow, like look at all this flipping and shit. And then they kept flipping and kept flipping and kept flipping and kept flipping. And it's just got diminishing returns for me. So I'm I'm kind of over I'm kind of over it. And it just doesn't like you call me a, a WWE like Mark or Shill or whatever. Yo, Clash of the Castle was kind of fun, yo, and that's a not it was that a was nothing a good a good was, damn I, show. I really enjoyed it. I really I'm enjoyed it. I'm halfway through like, it now. Yeah, yeah it's it's pretty fun. I've watched the last two pay per views for WWE. Yeah. They've been very fucking like SummerSlam was awesome. Yeah, man, it was. <laughs> it was like, like it's something about like two dudes just hitting each other, yo. Like instead yeah, of doing all that, that f- right, right, they beat yo. the shit out of each other. <laughs> right. Crazy. And they could, and they couldn't have picked a better person in Sheamus, who you know is just super duper pale. <laughs> Like, let's yeah. just get all the blood rushing right to your chest, bro. <laughs> and yeah, that match was so fun, man. And then I didn't watch all out because I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not paying fifty dollars for it. No, for get out of get here. Out of it. That's oh, they do pay per view. Oh, they do, they do pay. Oh, they do the old school WWE. Not, not, not only that, but you have to watch them through the worst app ever created by software engineers to, to do it. <laughs> like Ble- Bleacher Wait, Report. Bleacher though? Report fucking sucks. It's the worst. Because I've had Did to you? use it for Champions League stuff in the past, and it is it is garbage. It's hot. Wait, is that like an app that you can download? On like yeah, Google? it's 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 a Viacom app that that uh, I think a lot of Turner shit goes through. What the fuck else is on Bleacher Report? Other sports, but like it's dumb. <laughs> like it's really oh, okay. bad. Um, right. I've got a lot of thoughts about this. So first of all, uh, this seems like a classic example of a couple groups of people uh, in CM Punk and the Elite. Uh, taking a work and working themselves into a shoot. Like, that's basically what I feel like is, is going on here. Um, also, I'm going to need some apologies from people who fucking criticized WWE back in 2014 and said that somehow they dropped the ball by letting CM Punk walk out on them 
after the Royal, yeah. like, like before the Royal Rumble, because last I, like, this this situation seems awful similar, and last I checked, there's one common denominator <laughs> between the two, yeah. and it's Phil Brooks. And, <laughs> and the common denominator is a guy who comes out to cult of personality. Like, he's telling you, like, do you listen to the lyrics of the song, guys? <laughs> like, and, uh, in that media scrum, in that media scrum, CM Punk was literally having his cake and eating it, too. Like, I don't, I don't, um, I don't, that whole, that whole, that whole promotion feels so low rent. Like it's not. And here's the problem is that I feel like that one of the driving lessons from WCW's failure, and there was a lot of reasons WCW failed, Turner being one of them, ironically, um, considering that AEW has hitched their wagon to them now. And things of that nature is, but one of the other reasons is because they gave the people, the talent, way too much say in the goings ons of how creative is directed. And I'm just saying that it's not a good idea to have active, prominent wrestlers on your card also making executive decisions for the in steering your company forward. Yeah, man. It's not a good idea. And I get that there wouldn't be an AEW without Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and, and a few other folks that are executive, executive vice presidents in AEW. But when you have people that are responsible for certain decisions and then you have people like CM Punk that come in the door and like to kick shit up and are hard to work with famously, this is always going to be the end result of the situation. This is always going to be what happens. Yeah. yeah. So look, I wanted to be style. real. I wanted to be real. <laughs> I, 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 I'm like the chick from Bob's. I'm like the little girl from Bob's Burgers. Just <laughs> 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 so we'll uh, we'll then follow up with Film Wander, who says, "Where would you rank CM Punk scorched earth promo or shoot post interview in the all time pantheon?" I wouldn't, because because it's CM Punk being a petulant little baby. At that yeah, point. he's he's being that. That's the word, petulant. He he's being very petulant at at this point, right? Like, like at one point he was like, "I work with children." Well, you're you're acting like them. Mm-hmm. Like, be above it. Like, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but like, be like, be more like Chris Jericho. Like, he handled that shit in that in that press conference. He handled it like a champ. He handled it like you're supposed to handle it. He even said Vince wouldn't have put up with any of this. No. He went, and that's and that and that's right. case in point right there. Yes, like that is the one thing that, like, say what you will about Vince McMahon, but having that dude like being the ultimate decision maker and arbiter keeps shit like this from happening. Right, and I'm afraid that Tony Khan is just a fan. Right, mm-hmm. he's a fucking mark. Right, like he's a fan who is doing, and he doesn't have he doesn't necessarily he's too close to it. Mm-hmm. Right, like he's too close to it. And uh, or, you know, it's all fake and we're all being worked, uh, in which case, you know, I, I, I'm here for the ride. Yeah, bravo. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> well, and, and like like Tony Khan's to, you know, sitting here being worried about like perceived slights from WWE. Like he's sitting right, here, yeah. he's sitting out here complaining that like, oh, like, I, like, I don't like the fact that they ran up counter program, like two shows against us this weekend. And I don't like the fact that, you know, they, that they take veiled shots at us and that, you know, I've, I've expressed interest in wanting to work together, but you know, like, like it doesn't seem like they want to. And that's bull. I'm just like, bro, like Yo, they don't work it, with anybody. One, but, they don't work with anybody. Two, how does that benefit WWE? Yeah, it what? really doesn't at all. It doesn't, right? Like when Darth Vader and Yoda were in Soul Calibur, it didn't help the Star Wars property. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. right. Like, <laughs> like, like it. That's that's not that's not you know. Forbidden Door happened because because only eight people in this country know what the letters NJPW stands for. <laughs> so, I, I just don't. I, Nah, yo. Yeah. yeah. And and just slights against, they're taking slights against us, shots against us. What? Uh, really? <laughs> really? Are you really going to say that out your face? All right, yo. All right. Yeah. All right. They, like I said, they, there, there is some quid pro quo 
that I've seen WWE do in the past several months that has surprised me. Like the whole Mickey James showing up at the Rumble with the Impact World Title. Like I don't think that was oh, we're working with Impact, that was like, oh, we really fucked Mickey James on her way out yeah. the door last year, so let's <laughs> let's do a make good for Mickey James. Like, yeah, that's that's what her, that is. We threw all her belongings in a hefty bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like when they had, like, Chris Jericho and, and Daniel Bryan and, and a few other folks, like, recording, like, congratulations to John Cena. Like, that's not, you know, that that's just doing right by John Cena. Like, that's not there to promote... AEW. Like, yeah, they worked with that nigga for fucking 20 years. Right. Like, <laughs> it's, you know. Though. Shit, two of them were almost fucking related to each other. <laughs> for Christ's right. sake. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is almost my brother in law. So, like, yeah, I'm going to fucking say something. And, like, it's cool that Tony Khan allows them to do that because he's not a douchebag. But to expect, like, WWE to open up the forbidden door to AEW is just an insane fucking prospect that. Yeah, you know, out here, that, I, that I can't imagine and and plus do you really want that because we've seen that before in the WWF way back in the day with when like they used to partner with ECW and then what happened they raided all their fucking talent <laughs> that was worth the damn <laughs> and, and was and was a key contributor to ECW having to close their doors also how do you book that right right how do you how do you, how do you book that you're gonna you CM Punk is their champ yo you think he's gonna? You think he's gonna lay down for a WWE guy for for Roman Reigns? <laughs> Roman Reigns? <laughs> no, yo. <laughs> and you think Roman Reigns is gonna lay down for the dude that walked out the door eight right, years ago no. because God. because he didn't because he didn't want to wrestle the the boss's doofus son in law as he put it. <laughs> so who is now in charge of booking? Like, right. All right. All right. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Uh, Daniel um, asks, how early before your flight is too early to get to the three airport? Three hours. Three hours is too early. Yeah. Two, like, like, like two hours is the earliest I can get to the airport. Yeah. I don't be sitting there for that long. I don't either. I don't like, no, exactly. who the fuck wants to sit? I mean, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to OJ it. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to OJ it either. But... But uh, for those for you young people, uh, or Orento <laughs> James Simpson, uh, as is as his is his known by the government uh, and by the court of uh, by a court of law, is uh, used to be a football player, and he used to have a television commercial where he was running late for a flight. He had to run through an airport. Those were that was back in the day when a black man could run through an airport and not get tackled. <laughs> <It's> also, <laughs> also, also back in the day so that was, he, like, he wasn't black nigga he was OJ Stop oh that's right that's yeah, right. That's yeah right. exactly <laughs> like, that was, was, uh, those, those Hertz commercials was it Hertz? Yes. I think it was a Hertz yeah, it, was, it, was, it was Hertz yeah. do you guys remember that like in our lifetimes it used to be that like when you met someone at, like when you picked someone at the airport or when you met someone at the airport or when someone was dropping you off at the airport like they could walk you to the gate of, of yeah. the flight <laughs> Yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. Instead yeah. of the, instead of the terminal, or not even the terminal, but the just the fucking uh, departure area, like that's as far as you go, miss without <laughs> three forms of ID and a and a retinal scan of some of some kind. So, uh, let's see here. Anthony says, "What is the most over the top video game related purchase that you've made? Special edition console, collector's editions of game, etc." Well, for me, it's the NBA Jam Cat that has to be. Um, I I don't know. Like outside of a outside of an actual console, I don't like special edition consoles. Um, I don't I don't like the commitment that 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 uh, that comes with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what if I got what if I got a Halo Infinite Xbox uh, Series X? <laughs> right? You can never you can never get rid of it. Right, and I can you are you are legally game. entitled to keep it forever. Yeah, and that's that's all I'm doing is just looking at it, right? Like, oh, right. I'm, I'm looking at it for a game that I just don't play anymore. And right? just and like, just and but but hey, but it, it, it's good times whenever you press that power button and all you use. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think I bought a limited edition Call of Duty game with the the night vision goggles. Mm. I think I bought that that um, edition. And I think that's about it. And I'm like, I'm never doing this shit again. That was fun for a night. I don't buy limited edition nothing. I'm, I don't need all that other extra bullshit. So no. 
I think God of War 3 was the special edition that I bought that convinced me that I no longer need to buy special editions anymore. Is that the one that came with Pandora's box? Yeah, it was really shitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was real. Yeah, it was real. It was real stupid. Yeah, real, real low real quality dumb. collectible. Uh, so, and what game would get you to go to a store for a midnight release, nigga? Not zero games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of question is that? <laughs> no <laughs> game ever. should be banned. Not, not asking that question. Not, <laughs> not only am I not going to a store for a midnight release, I'm not even staying up till midnight to play my digital download. I am. Exactly. I have got to go to sleep. <laughs> okay, no. Exactly. Like, get out of here. Yeah. I, I'm an old man and I need my bed rest. I will play it at at five thirty the following day when I get home from work. That's when I will play my new game, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll take off and play it all day. That's awesome. Yeah, fun. I'll probably just take off. Yeah. Uh, here's one from L L L B M P. Sorry, I don't know your actual name. Uh, would you rather only play first party titles or indies? Now um, specify the first party because I feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, because first party titles are going to be far, few and far between. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, if you beat if okay, if Spider Man comes out, how many times are you gonna beat Spider Man before fucking God of War comes out? I mean, Four. you're you're asking two different. <laughs> you're gonna say you're asking two different people that you're, you're gonna get very different that's answers. What, from. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. For me, for me, it's you. one. For Mike, it's ten. So. <laughs> So now I'm gonna take the indies because there's gonna be a wider variety of games. Yeah, I would, I would also probably take the indies. Micah, as as he alluded so to, is a basic do? bitch. He will take the first. Oh no! I, yeah, I'm gonna take the. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the fuck out of Spider Man. I will play Spider Man four more times. That's yeah, insane. get out of it. <laughs> uh, Let Gerard- it get released again. I'll get another platinum. That's <laughs> Gerard says you're trapped in a saw esque trap with 30 seconds remaining, and the last two characters from the last two games you played are your team for salvation. Who is your team? Uh, he said sorry, he was up late on Facebook last night, and this is the best he could come up with. <laughs> uh, I like this question. Um, well, the last two games I played were Dragon Age Inquisition and um, and Saints Row. So. Uh, <laughs> One of them will be useful, and uh, and the other one will be a foul mouthed black dude, um, who whose voice I don't care for. He sounds a little bit like the, the Saints Row has multiple different voices. Um, one that is distinctly white, one that is distinctly black, one that is distinctly Latin, uh, for male and female. And the black dude sounds like like Bomani Jones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and it just don't like it just don't work uh with the face that I created. So so yeah, yeah. I'm probably dead. Well my mine is the golfer from Curse to Golf and the Lamb from Call to the Lamb. So I feel like I'm kind of fucked in in that, in that case. I'm <laughs> um, looking at my PlayStation my PlayStation app. The last two games I played were Apex Legends and Out Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. And I think the last character I used was probably Bangalore. I don't have a chance. She can heal uh, you. The black chick. Yeah, no, that's um, that's not Bangalore. Bangalore is the, the army chick. Oh, okay. Um, who the fuck? Who's that's? I can't remember her name. Um, and the second person was the chick from Gal- Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. So she flies ships. She, she probably wouldn't be of any help for me. I mean, we'd, we'd all probably be dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless Bangalore had her gun, you know. Uh, Trey says, and personally, I'm giving this. The question of the week. With the recent anniversary, 30th anniversary of Batman the Animated Series being this past weekend. Jesus Christ. I know, yeah. Were were the games based on it during the 16-bit era good? Or just fever dreams via nostalgia? Also, your favorite Batman animated series episode. Hey, Brad, uh, who do you love more, your kid or your wife? (laughs) (laughs) What kind of question is that? There are way too many Batman the Animated Series episodes to uh, to name. Uh. Almost I, got him, uh, baby doll, heart of ice. I was about to say almost Harley, got him. Yeah, Harley yeah. and Ivy, uh, the Two Face Origin. Oh, that's, um, oh, see, I was gonna uh, go with Heart of Ice, but I think it, I think it might actually be the Two Face Origin. Two-Face. Harvey, no. Never <laughs> 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 no, no, forget that line. Yo, um, there are way yeah. too many over the edge. Yeah. Look, I'm not a huge fan of like the fourth season redesigns mm-hmm. uh, where everyone was real angular and the Joker had no lips uh, <laughs> and, and, and Catwoman had white skin. 
uh, for some fucking reason. But like the, the that season had had Mad Love, uh, which is basically Harley's origin, and and Over the Edge, which is basically like uh, you talk about a fever dream, like mm-hmm. spoilers. But like Over the Edge was was like a uh, an elaborate fever dream where where Batman's identity was found out. Uh, because like Batgirl dies and Jim Gordon finds out, oh shit, that was Batgirl. Uh, uh, my daughter's dead, and and so he's like, well, fuck this. You Batman got my daughter killed, so now it's it's just the GCPD's all out assault on everything fucking Bruce Wayne related. It's fucking awesome, yo. So yeah, that's way too many. That's way too many episodes to to name. And yeah, uh, there were probably a few to name. All those, all those games. From, from <laughs> no, no, oh. wait. There's, there's like two really good ones. The, uh, the, the Sega Genesis one, the Super Nintendo one was the best out of all of them. Um, the side scroller mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. Batman. Was it Batman and Robin? Yeah. The, 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 adve- the, Sega, the Adventures of Batman and Robin. Yeah, the Adventures of Batman and Robin on Super on Super Nintendo was the best one, and then the second best was the Genesis version because it was a, it was two different games, yeah. but they were good. Uh, the rest of them, eh, the one where Batman was purple on nintendo mm-hmm. was fine <laughs> it was very weird but that was it was fine for a nintendo game it was just it was just a platformer and the rest of them were trash yeah yes <sighs> i really also like the the one man hatter episode where like he is like mind controlling like batman so that he's in like the dream world where bruce where bruce wayne isn't batman and his and his life is like perfect yeah but then and then he starts to unravel and figure out man what a good fucking show I feel like I want to yeah, really man. watch those again. The, the one, the one where, the one where, um, where Sid the Squid killed Batman, mm-hmm. and Joker got pissed at him, and he was like, "Nah, yo, that was my kill. I was supposed to kill Batman, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you my hobby." Yo. Uh, like, no, 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 that's a different one. The, the one where he was like, "I'm gonna make you my hobby," is a guy cut the Joker off in traffic, and the Joker mm-hmm. pulled some Russell Crowe unhinged shit. <laughs> it was like, "Nah, yo, you my new hobby now." And Batman was like, "He called you his hobby." Like, God damn. <laughs> yeah, man, that was a great. Oh, that that was one with like the fucking old salesman dude, like the death of the salesman guy, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I remember. Man, shit. Yeah. Uh, that might be time for a rewatch, man. Good. What a what a great fucking show. We truly didn't deserve it. Um, and then uh, Carl says, uh, if you had to choose one game to teach a complete non-gamer how to play video games and what makes video games lovable, which game would you choose and why? He says that he would choose Breath of the Wild, which I have to tell you, for a brand new gamer, would be an awful choice. That is, <laughs> that that is, I've, I haven't played it, but like, don't they have breakable weapons? And shit yeah, it's that, that's that's too hard. Like, like that's a great game to show someone like the scale of video games and like how grandiose video games can be. But to teach them what makes games fun, I feel like you can just go old school with this and and go with like Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario Three. Um, I did this with my wife with uh, Mario Kart, and she really enjoyed it. Mm. So. Something with a very easy premise. Ah, I don't know. Ugh. I don't know. Probably some old school. Yeah. I, th- I feel simplistic. like it would have to be. Yeah, I feel like it would have to be something kind of old school, like Breath of the Wild. Is no, that's wild. Is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wild. Like, yeah. <laughs> That is that is something that uh, you kind of grad. You, that shouldn't be a first Zelda game. That should be something you kind of graduate to. Yeah, I would. I would be very curious to know if there's anyone whose first like video, whose first major video game experience was Breath of the Wild and how that went. Because I'd be. Do y'all know what your very first video game was that you ever played? Like ever? It would have had to be something on the Atari, but I don't. But I couldn't tell you what. the The only game I remember on Atari was this like carnival game and i don't even remember what you did i just remember it had like a carnival aesthetic and i remember playing that at my dad's um and then aside from that it would have been super mario Bros. so i think it was pitfall um, like i literally the very first game i ever played was pitfall i had a commodore but i don't remember any games from was oregon trail on the commodore I'm not I sure. I, I I just remember Oregon Trail from from the uh, Apple II days. So or not yeah, the Apple II days. Oregon but Trail at school. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just the yeah, whatever, 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 whatever Mac the the schools had. That's why I remember playing Oregon Trail. 
Yeah, I looked up Oregon Trail Commodore 64. It might be that, but the one that, you know, the one that sticks out is, you know, the Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt combo. You see, kids, back in the day, <laughs> uh, when, the, when the Nintendo Entertainment System came out in 1985, you got the system, you got two controllers. Two controllers. A light gun. And yeah. there's a reason you got the light gun. It's because you got two whole ass games, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, uh, which uh, was probably the start of my hate for dogs. Um, <laughs> before I got bit by that by that Rottweiler, uh, there was there was the Duck Hunt dog who would fucking laugh at you when you missed a duck. And that's the duck. Uh, the, the dog is supposed to be on your side, and he's just fucking giggling at your ass. <laughs> <you're not laughs> But but the, but he, but I mean when you when you killed a duck like he proudly held it up to display it as well as as a duck yeah he back. did but he didn't he didn't proudly he proudly held it up not to to say hey look what you did he proudly held it up to say hey look what I did I brought this to you see <laughs> so you don't care. duck dog dogs are fucking selfish and fuck animals man I don't like animals Get out of here. <laughs> Work and sustenance. That's what animals are for. Uh, work and sustenance. That's it. Get out of here. And on that note, uh, that wraps up the Dense Pixels Post Office. We appreciate everyone that sent in questions. Uh, don't forget that if you join our Discord at densepixels.com slash fans, you too can send in questions that we will answer on the show. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this as well as all the other TNP Studio shows wherever you download fine podcasts. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube by going to youtube.com slash densepixels. We're also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash densepixels, and you can follow our individual accounts. I am densepixelsbrad, Terrence is apparition410, Carrie Suppets Carrie, Micah, not cool enough to be on Twitch. So don't worry about following him. I am on Twitch. But you are, but, but damn, damn if you use it. No, I don't, I don't use it. I, don't <laughs> I barely use it. And like, like the people that I follow on Twitch, they just upload their shit to YouTube. So I'll just watch it. <laughs> right. I watched the uh, East Coast. What the fuck was on this, this uh, past weekend? Something. Like it was a fighting tournament. It's pretty dope. Or was it yeah. yesterday? I don't remember. Either way. Uh, also, no show next week for those of you uh, listening because uh, your boy will be down in North Carolina doing some uh, <laughs> doing some work for the day job. So we will uh, we will catch you guys in two weeks. Till then, thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you all the next time. See you. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.